Hello everybody, Tony Beers here again. And this video is going to be a follow-up video of the video I did about the Amazing Spider-Man trailer. Now there's something that I noticed after watching the trailer, and that is that there's a scene where Peter is having dinner with Gwen Stacy and her family. Gwen Stacy's father asks about Peter, and Gwen says that Peter lives with his aunt and uncle. And during this same scene, they are discussing Spider-Man. Now this leads me to believe that Peter becomes Spider-Man before his Uncle Ben dies. Now if this is true, this is a big mistake made by the filmmakers. Now it's essential to Spider-Man's character that Uncle Ben dies before Peter decides to become Spider-Man or else his character has no growth and Uncle Ben's death becomes meaningless. Now the reason I say this is because Peter has to learn responsibility and the consequences of his actions. Peter becoming Spider-Man before Uncle Ben dies is like Bruce Wayne becoming Batman before his parents die or Tony Stark becoming Iron Man before getting shrapnel stuck in his chest. Tony Stark starts off as a billionaire with not a care in the world and it takes almost dying before he realizes what damage him manufacturing weapons has done to the world. If he never got shrapnel stuck in his chest, he would just go on as a billionaire playboy and not learn a thing and not grow as a character. He would just continue to live life as he did before he became Iron Man and that would ruin the character. And Peter Parker is the same way. He has to learn a lesson in order to become a hero. In the beginning Peter Parker is very selfish. He only wants to use his powers to make money. In other words he's being an average teenager and it takes Uncle Ben's death for him to realize that he should use his powers to help people. Uncle Ben has to die by the hands of a criminal that Peter decides not to stop in order for him to realize that he should use his power to stop criminals. And if he doesn't learn this, if he starts off being Spider-Man before Uncle Ben dies, then he doesn't learn anything because he already knows responsibility. Uncle Ben, your death will not be in vain. I know now that with great power comes great responsibility and I will use my power to fight crime, which is what I was doing already. And if he is Spider-Man before Uncle Ben dies, and he is a crime fighter, then why would he not stop this criminal before killing Uncle Ben? After Peter gains his powers, he doesn't just wake up and decide, oh, I want to be a superhero. No, he has to learn. And if he doesn't learn that to be responsible with his powers, then this movie is a complete betrayal of the character. Now, a lot of people are excited to see that, oh, he's got mechanical web shooters this time, and oh, Gwen Stacy is his first girlfriend, and oh, look, he cracks one joke while he's fighting a car thief. Those things are completely superficial in comparison to his motivation to become a superhero. I could really care less about mechanical web shooters or whose girlfriend he has first, Gwen or Mary Jane, or if he cracks jokes. Those are very superficial compared to his motivation to become a superhero. The people who say, oh, Sam Raimi is not accurate to the comic, he actually got this part exactly right, Spider-Man's motivation. That was perfect the way that Sam Raimi did it. And that is the most essential part to Spider-Man. Which brings me to my next point, that this, the tone of this movie is way too dark. Think about all the characters that are introduced into this movie who will eventually die. First we have Peter Parker's mother, his father, his uncle, Gwen Stacy, Captain Stacy, 
And if this movie is like many other superhero movies, the villain will die, so that's the lizard. So that's six people introduced in this first movie who will eventually die, which makes the tone of this movie way too dark. Now, I know that not all the characters are going to die in this first movie. You know, Gwen Stacy's not going to die. And Captain Stacy's probably not going to die. But they will die eventually in the upcoming sequels. Now, I know that that's how it is in the comics, that these people died in the comics. But their deaths were spaced out over years in the comic. By introducing these characters in this first movie, it just sets up their deaths that will follow in the sequel. Which means that in every sequel, somebody will die. That would be as if, in the comics, every single issue, somebody died, which would be ridiculous. By setting up these characters and killing them off, it would make all the sequels very predictable, cliche, and boring. It will become a joke. People going to see these movies are going to sit in the seat and they'll be like, Okay, who's it going to be? Who's going to die now? It's ironic that the people who are loving this trailer are the same people who hated how emo Peter was in Spider-Man 3. And you can see in this trailer that during the whole movie, Peter is emo. Uh, the same people are saying, oh, we're glad that we hear Spider-Man telling jokes. And which is it? Do you want a darker, serious Spider-Man, or do you want a jokey Spider-Man? I mean, which is it? What do people want? Personally, I like the tone of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films because the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films balance the action and the comedy. There are a lot of people out there saying that we want a dark, serious Spider-Man, and I'm here to tell you that Spider-Man is not dark and serious. There's plenty of goofy moments in the Spider-Man comics. Just think of the bombastic Bagman, or how Spider-Man is always joking with the villains. He is known as the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He's not known as the emo, dark, and depressing Spider-Man. This reboot seems to be very unbalanced. It seems to be very heavy in the dark, depressing, emo stuff. And very lacking in the light, joking Spider-Man. He makes like one joke in the entire trailer. In the rest of the trailer, he's being emo. Look at how many times Peter is emo in these trailers. He's emo as a little boy. He's emo going to school. He's emo wearing a hoodie during class. Uh, don't they have heat in this school? He's emo wearing a hoodie walking home. He's emo at the docks for some reason. Here he is just crying like a little bitch. How many times does he tell a joke? I mean, it's only that one time where he's capturing that car thief. And how did he get in that back seat anyway? I mean, he would have to break into the car himself, which that would make him a criminal as well, I guess. I mean, Spider-Man wouldn't do that. And what's with that creepy Michael Myers head tilt he does after he captures the car thief? I mean, that's just plain creepy. I mean, is he supposed to be Spider-Man, the serial killer? I mean, he looks like he's about to steal your soul and eat a baby. He looks like that kid from Insidious. And just because the current Batman franchise has to be dark doesn't mean that all superhero movies has to be dark. Let me give a distinction here. Batman should be dark. Superman should be light. Punisher should be dark. Fantastic Four should be light. Ghost Rider should be dark. And Spider-Man should be light. And as I said in my last video, a lot of people are excited about the mechanical web shooters saying that they are more comic book accurate than what the Sam Raimi films were with the organic web shooters. And let me clarify to these people that the organic web shooters is not something new that Sam Raimi came up with. This is something that existed in the comics long before the movie was even made. And I'm referring to Spider-Man's black symbiote costume where when he wore this he gained the ability to shoot organic webs from his costume. And the black suit symbiote costume existed 
way back in the 80s, long before Sam Raimi made his movies. I recently seen a preview for the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon which has a much lighter tone than this movie. In fact it mixes comedy and action much as the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films do. This actually looks really good and this is how Spider-Man should be. Now speaking of Ultimate Spider-Man this reboot takes a lot more from the Ultimate Spider-Man comics than the actual Amazing Spider-Man comics. Therefore I feel that this movie should have been titled Ultimate Spider-Man rather than Amazing Spider-Man. By calling it Amazing Spider-Man it's kind of false advertisement. The Sam Raimi films were adapted more from the Amazing Spider-Man than Ultimate Spider-Man. So, that was more of my thoughts on the Amazing Spider-Man trailer. My name is Tony Beers, and I'll see you next time.